matter? I was looking for you down at the coffee cart. No way do I have time for coffee today. I have to do research for this paper I'm writing. It's about the origins of affirmative action programs. My professor said that I have to find at least three primary sources. I've got encyclopedia articles and books and a few journal articles, but my instructor said those aren't primary sources and I need to keep looking. I guess I'm not even sure what primary sources are, let alone where to find them. Oh well, primary sources can be hard to locate, but I think I can help. I had to write a paper for my women's history class using all primary sources last semester. So I've been through this. Okay, primary sources, but what does that even mean? When I was taking a biology class last term, our instructor had us read primary source documents, and I'm sure those were articles from journals. So why can't I use a journal article I found about affirmative action? That is a bit confusing. I think the problem is that in different disciplines, primary sources can mean different things. So it is like I remember from my bio class. In the sciences, primary source documents refer to journal articles that report on original research findings or ideas. It's the first time the research has been shared with the scientific community, so the publication of those original results in an academic journal is a primary source of that information. Right, and then when your local newspaper writes an article reporting on that same research, that's a secondary source. In the social sciences, primary sources can also be statistics and other quantitative data, you know, numbers, that have been gathered about populations like census data sets. So the data itself is a primary source, and then when someone analyzes that data, that analysis is a secondary source? Yes! Then, for historical research like you were doing, primary sources refer to... Wait, I remember reading a good definition somewhere. Oh, of course, the American Library Association! Primary sources are original records created at the time historical events occurred, or well after events in the form of memoirs and oral histories. Primary sources may include letters, manuscripts, diaries, journals, newspapers, speeches, interviews, memoirs, documents produced by government agencies, photographs, audio recordings, moving pictures or video recordings, research data, and objects or artifacts such as works of art or ancient roads, buildings, tools, and weapons. Right, but it says newspapers are primary sources, so how come when I brought in a newspaper article that talked about affirmative action, my professor still said, no go? The problem is that, again, it depends on the context. A newspaper article from now isn't a primary source, but a newspaper article from that time that you are studying is. It's got to be like speeches, writings from the time, photographs from the time, or memoirs written later, but by people that were actually there being part of that history. First-hand accounts, that kind of thing. Okay, I see. So show me where those kinds of sources are shelved in the library, and I'll grab a few, and we can go get that coffee. Uh-oh, Len. I said I can help, but I didn't say it was going to be easy. There are a few strategies I learned that I can tell you, but you aren't done yet. Don't look so sick. I'll help you. And the good news is that primary sources I found for that women's history class were some of the most interesting sources I used. It really does make it seem more real and alive to read about events in the words of people who are there. You'll see. Okay, well, yay. Where do I start? We're going to try three things. The online catalog, some history databases, and the web. I did try searching in the online catalog, and I did find some good books about the history of affirmative action, but none of them was a primary source. The trick is to think about ways to describe primary sources that then use those terms to search by words and subject headings. You know about subject headings, right? The terms used to describe books in the online catalog? See, look at this book. This was a great one I found for my women's history paper. This is a collection of autobiographical writings from women between 1819 and 1919. They were written during the time I was studying by people living through the events I was researching, so they were primary sources. See the subject headings? If the book had the subject heading, Women, United States History, 19th Century, it would be about that same subject, but it would be a secondary source. Analysis written by someone later on, not a source from that time. That sources at the end of the subject heading is what you want to see. It means that this book contains primary sources, writings from that time. Autobiography is another term that can indicate a primary source. Okay, so you're saying I should try a search of subject words, including my keywords, and also sources or autobiography? Oh, well, look at that. That's perfect. You're a genius. I know, but don't stop there. You can also try your keywords with words like correspondence, memoirs, letters, personal narratives. Those are some I've found to be useful. 
Okay, I will try those too. Now, what about the history databases you mentioned? It seems to me like the periodical databases through the library have current magazine, journal, and newspaper articles. Nothing older than, like, the 1980s. That's true. That's mostly what they have. But a few sources do have older primary source documents as well. If you go into the History Reference Center, you can do a keyword search on affirmative action and then narrow your results by publication type to get only primary source documents. History Reference Center has a combination of periodical articles and primary source documents like these speeches, so you'll get results that way. Are there any other databases good for primary sources? Yeah, it's a case by case depending on your topic, but another good one is that Gale Virtual Reference Library. There are several collections of primary sources in here. So, for example, under History, there's the American Decades Primary Sources set. Search Affirmative Action within that source, and you'll get primary source documents on that topic. You can also keyword search across the whole collection, but it's hard to narrow to just primary sources using keywords. So finding a collection of primary sources and searching within that is probably the best way to go in Gale. So I guess I already have at least three sources with books and articles. But you said the web has primary sources too? Definitely. There are really great collections online of primary source documents. The library website links to a few good ones to start with. If you go to the Find Links to Internet Resources link on the library homepage and search for primary sources as keywords, you should find them. For example, the Avalon Project from Yale Law School makes available documents related to law, history, politics, and government. You might find something good there. And the Library of Congress American Memory Project has all kinds of sources, text, audio, photographs on all kinds of topics about American history. Then, of course, it never hurts to try something like a Google search for your keywords. And also words like primary source or primary documents. You never know if some interested institute or organization has put together an archive or document on your topic. This looks really great. I'll just double check who this AAD is and make sure I think the source is reliable. This really wasn't so bad. Thanks for your help. No problem. You can buy the coffee.